Good day, grade 11s. Welcome to this um, lesson on our public holiday. Um, very special public holiday because we are, it's voting day. So I hope those of you that are old enough to vote or if you've got relations that are old enough to vote, that you encourage them to vote. Right, so today we're going to do nature of roots. Um, we were talking about quadratic equations before, so we're moving on to nature of roots, and then if we have time, we're going to look at factorization by substitution. Right, so first of all, what you need to understand about what we mean by nature of roots. Nature of roots means the type of roots and number of roots. In other words, the roots are actually where a graph cuts the x-axis. Okay, that's what roots mean. It means where does it cut the x-axis? Okay, or where does y equal zero? Okay, that is what roots are. Now, we use the quadratic formula. In case you don't remember, this is x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And that is the quadratic formula, and we use this when we are looking for nature, when the nature of roots. Okay, so, and I'm going to explain that to you in a minute. Um, but the other thing I wanted to say to you about this is that obviously you can have more than one root, or you can have um, two roots or three roots, depending on what we're doing. But since we are doing quadratics, our options are 0, 1, and 2. That's it. Okay, since we're doing quadratics. Right, so now if we look at x squared minus x plus 3, if we wanted to know what the nature of the roots were, um, just a second, I just want to see something. There we go. Okay, fine. Whoopsie, I'm going the wrong way. No, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, whoopsie. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Let me just uh, start again. I don't know what happened there. Um, let's start again from the beginning. So, I don't know what happened. So, if we're looking at this equation, yeah, you've got x squared minus x plus 3. If we want to factorize it and we're going to use the formula, we go x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, right? So you get, like I said, you get given this formula, so you don't have to memorize it, but you do need to know how to use it. So if we had to just talk about what the roots of this are, we're not looking for the nature of roots at the moment. We're just trying to identify the roots, okay? So if we do that, do you agree that A, yeah, is equal to 1, B is equal to minus 1, and C is equal to 3, right? So if you do that, we now need to substitute into this. We get x is equal to minus b is going to be minus minus 1 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 1 or squared, minus 4 times a, which is 1, times by c, which is 3, all over, all over, um, 2 times 1. Okay, so we get minus times the minus the plus is 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared is 1 minus 12 all over 2. Okay, so if we do that, we get 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 11 over 2 negative 11. So do you see that there's a problem with this? Because we cannot get the square root of a negative number. The square root of a negative number gives us what are called imaginary numbers. So what does this mean? This means that we cannot get a real root. There is no real root. Okay, because we cannot. Okay, let me just show you. If I get out my calculator, and I go square root of negative 11. Look what it does. It says math error because 
with a calculator, we only work with real numbers. We don't work with imaginary numbers. So there's no real root. So what does that mean? Now, remember that when we're talking about the X and Y axis, okay, we are talking about a graph that is a positive graph. It's a happy graph and it's going through plus three. So it's a positive graph and it's going through plus three. When we say there's no real root, we mean that it does not cut the X axis at all. Okay, so it either does that or it does this. We can't tell from what we've got so far. All we've got is that. Okay, if we use the fact that the turning line, turning point of the x value of the turning point is given by minus b over 2a, we can work out that that becomes minus minus 1 over 2 times 1, which becomes 1 over 2. So therefore, it's actually this one here. It is this one here. Okay, right. That's how we can tell what it is. But it doesn't cut the x-axis because this whole thing is going to give us a math error because there's no such thing as a square root of a negative number in the real axis world. Okay, so what have we learned? We've learned that when delta, oh, sorry, when the square root, when anything on the square root is negative, then we cannot, there's no real roots. Okay, get it. Right, let's try another example. Now we've got minus x squared plus 6x minus 5. So we know that this is a sad graph because of the minus. And we go, know it's going through minus 5. Now let's see if it cuts the x-axis or not. So again, a is equal to minus 1, b is equal to 6, and c is equal to negative 5, right? So if we go x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We've got minus 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is minus 1. Okay, minus 4, sorry, squared, times by a. Oh, I made a mistake. Sorry. Uh, let's fix that. Okay, b squared is 6, so it's 36 minus 4 times a, which is minus 1, times by c, which is minus, minus 5, all over 2 times minus 1. So it becomes minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 36. A minus times a minus is a plus times a minus is a minus. And 4 times 5 is 20, all over negative 2. So d degree is minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 16, all over negative 2. Minus and a minus cancel. So it becomes, actually, do you agree that 2 goes into 6 3 times? So it becomes 3 plus or minus 4. So therefore, this graph is going to cut either 3 plus 4, which is 7, or at 3 minus 4, which is minus 1. So this has got 2. How is that going to happen? It's going to cut at 7, and it's going to cut at negative 1. But it's going through minus 5. Let me just check that I've got this right. It becomes minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times minus 1 times minus 5. That's a minus. 4 and 5 is 20, so it's 36 minus 20, which is 16. And it stays minus 6 plus or minus, and that's 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So if we do it slower, let's see if I've got this right. Okay, we've got minus 6 plus or minus square root of 16 is 4, all over negative 2. So that becomes minus 6 minus 4 over negative 2. Minus 6 minus 4 is, uh, minus 6 minus 4 is minus 10 divided by minus 2 is, is 5. Okay, or, yeah, I made a mistake there. I'm sorry, I did it too quickly. Minus 6 
plus 4 over negative 2. Minus 6 plus 4 is negative 2. It's negative 2 over 2, which equals 1. That's much better. Let's try again. So now it's going to be at 5, and then it's going to be at 1 and 5, and it goes something like that. So do you see that this has got what? It's got two roots, right? And what else is special about them? So we've got two roots. They're real because they cross the x-axis and they are unequal. So what have we said? We've said that if delta is greater than zero, if delta is greater than zero, then we know that we're going to get two equal, unequal, sorry, unequal real roots. And also note that because it's a perfect square, what are they? The numbers are rational. They can be written as a fraction because if it wasn't a perfect square, if this was like, if this is 15, the square root of 15 would not be a beautiful four, so it wouldn't work out as a fraction. So because delta, sorry, because everything under the square root, sorry, let me just preempt myself. Everything under the square root is called delta or the discriminant. Okay, so when I'm talking about delta, I'm talking about everything in the square root. So we're saying that b squared minus 4ac, if it's greater than zero, you get two unequal real roots. And if it's a perfect square, then the roots are rational. Okay, which makes sense. They're written, can be written as a fraction. Okay, let's do another example. So the first thing here you can see is we can take out a common factor of 2. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take out 2 and you're left with 2x squared plus 3x minus 4 equals 0. And because that's 0, this can go away. Now we're going to again substitute in. So we've got x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And again, this dude here is a plus 3 is b and minus 4 is c. So you've got x is equal to minus 3 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 9 minus 4 times by a which is 2 times by c which is negative 4 all over 2 times by 2 which is going to be minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 minus times minus is a plus. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 4 is 32. And times of 4, should I say? 4 times, okay, one other way, 4 times 4 is 16 times by 2 is 32 over 4. So do you agree we've got x is equal to minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 41 all over 4? So do you agree that we've got a graph that's a happy graph going through minus 4? It's going through minus 4. Okay. And it has two roots. So, so far we know it's got two roots. Okay. They're unequal because one of them is going to be x is equal to minus 3 plus the square root of 41 over 4. And the other one is going to be x is equal to minus 3 minus the square root of 41 over 4, okay? So they're going to be unequal. Because they cut the x-axis, they're going to be real, okay? So that's cool, but are they going to be rational? In other words, could we write them as a fraction? So let's pop this into our calculator and see what we got, okay? That's or. So let's have a look. Okay, so we've got minus 3 plus the square root of 41 equals divided by 4 equals and then we press the AC button and we get 0 0.8507 so you see the number carries on and on forever so we can round this off to 0 0.85 but effectively this is an irrational number because it carries on forever so therefore it doesn't cannot be written as a fraction so this is going to be sorry 0 comma 0 comma 85 so do you agree that it is going to be irrational and the reason it is irrational is because everything under the square root is not a perfect square okay this 41 is not a perfect square okay now let's do this one um, just to prove to you that they are unequal 
So we've got minus 3 minus the square root of 41 equals divided by 4 equals which becomes minus 2.35078 da, 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 da. so you can see it carries on and on forever again so again it's irrational but we can write minus 2.35 to so it becomes minus 2 comma 35 so yes our roots are we've got two roots they're unequal they're real they're irrational okay so it's going to look something like that more or less okay we don't really care this is just to give us an idea of what it could look like okay so do you see that from our equation if we look at this dude yeah we can actually get an idea of what type of roots a graph is going to have and where it's going to cut the x-axis or if it's not going to cut the x-axis. Let's look at one more example. Um, yeah, so we've got again that this is A, the whole of this is B and this dude here is C. So x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so it becomes minus minus 4 plus or minus the square root of minus 4 all squared minus 4 times by 4 times by 1 all over 2 times by 4 which becomes minus times a minus is a plus so it's 4 plus or minus the square root of Minus 4 squared is 16, minus 4 times 4 is 16, all over 8. Okay, so do you agree that becomes 4 plus or minus 0 over 8, which equals a half? So what are we saying? We're saying that we've got a happy graph, which goes through plus 1. What happened to that piece? Yeah. And it touches the x-axis at a half. It just touches. In, in fact, the turning point of it is a half. That there is x equals a half. And what we're saying is that, and this is important, we are saying it's got two real equal roots. Two real equal roots, and they happen to be rational as well. Why are they real? Because they touch or cross the x-axis. We always have two roots if it comes to the case like this, okay? So it's two real equal roots and they're equal because they both touch at the same point and they're rational because we can write it as a fraction. Because remember, a rational number means a number that we can write as a fraction. Okay, so then we can say, well, in that case, if the thing under the square root sign is equal to zero, that's what we get. We get two real equal roots. Okay, so now we can analyze what we've learned so far. If we say that x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, and we're not actually interested in finding out where it cuts the x-axis. We just want to give an idea of what the roots are like, whether or not it cuts the x-axis, um, or not, whether or not they make the same equal root, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We can just look at the dude and the square root, and we call that the discriminant. And the sign for the discriminant is a capital triangle, which is the Greek letter for D, which is delta. And it also means change, but it doesn't matter. So discriminant, what we call delta, is defined as b squared minus 4ac, which is everything under the square root, okay? So what did we say? We said that if delta was smaller than naught, okay, then what happened? The roots were imaginary, imaginary, okay? Or, depending on who you're talking to, non-real. Why? Because the square root of a negative number, as far as we're concerned, does not exist. If the roots are equal, if delta is equal to naught, what happens? If delta equals naught, then do you agree that this bit here just goes away? <clears throat> okay, so you end up with x equal to minus b over 2a. That's it, okay? Therefore, we can say we're going to have two real equal.
equal rational roots. Okay, two real equal rational roots. Why rational? Because we can write it as a fraction. Okay, if delta is bigger than naught, if it's bigger than naught, do you agree that what happens? That means we're going to have two unequal real roots. They don't necessarily have to be rational because it's only rational if this is a perfect square. Because if it's a perfect square, then we end up with a proper number on the other side, okay? And if it's greater or equal to zero, then we're going to have exactly the same thing. We're going to have two, just two real roots. We just have two real roots. If, it's, if we don't know if it's equal to zero, then we don't know if it's equal or not. Okay, so now that we know that, we are going to use this information to analyze some equations and to analyze the potential roots of those questions. So let's just run through this again to make sure you know. And this, guys, is the thing that I would make sure I know for exams. Go make sure, make a copy of it for yourself. I don't care if you draw it out or if you, um, or if you take a screenshot or whatever. But this is what you need to know. Okay. So if the discriminant is smaller than zero, then the roots are non-real because we do not cut the x-axis. Okay. If the roots are real and equal, then delta has to equal naught. And that means you're going to have two equal real rational roots. Okay. If the roots are, if great delta is greater than naught, then you're going to have roots are real and unequal. And if it's a perfect square, then they're rational. But it's, if it's an imperfect square, if it's not a perfect square, then they are irrational. In other words, they cannot be written as a fraction. Okay, so now let's practice. It says show that the roots of x squared minus 2x minus 7 is equal to 0. So again, think about this. For them to be real in irrational, we need to calculate delta. And delta has to be greater than naught, but not a perfect square. To be real, there has to be greater than naught, but it cannot be a perfect square. So let's work out what delta is. So again, remember that the coefficient of x squared is 1. So that is A. The whole of this is B, and the whole of this is C. Now, delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. It's everything you'd find under the square root. So that is what? It is minus 2 squared minus 4 times 1 times by negative 7. So that's going to be 2 squared is 4 minus times minus is a plus and 4 times 7 is 28 which makes this equal to 32. So yay, we can say that delta is greater than zero, but it is not a perfect square, not a perfect square. You may not write it like that. You have to write it out like that. Therefore, the roots we could say are real. They are irrational. They are, just for the fun of it, they are unequal. Okay, there we go. Right, let's try another example. It says, for which values of k will the roots of this be real and equal? Okay, so first of all, the first thing you always have to do is get this thing in the standard format. Okay, so we need it to fall, we fall in the ax squared plus bx plus c format. So what we're going to do is rearrange that so it becomes 6x squared minus 4kx plus 6 equals 0. Okay, then do you agree this is a, the whole of this is b, and the whole of that is c, right? Now, what do we want? We want real equal roots. For us to have real equal roots, delta has to be equal to zero. Because if that's true, then you've got x is equal to minus b 
plus or minus the square root of 0 all over 2a, which is going to be minus b over 2a. So therefore, the roots are going to be real because you can write them as a fraction and this is not a negative. And they have to be equal. And the only way they can be equal is if this goes away entirely. So the delta has to equal naught. And you write 4 equal. You tell them why you're saying that. 4 equal roots. So let's find what delta is. Delta is equal to b squared which is going to be minus 4 all squared. Okay, b squared minus 2, the first term which is 6, and the third term which is 6 as well. And I've made a mistake, I've let up my k. Because what are we doing? We're solving for k, we're finding out what value of k works, okay? So this becomes minus times minus to plus, it becomes 16k squared minus 6 times 6 is 32 times by 2 is 72 and this has got to equal 0 we're trying to find out for which values of k will this thing here work okay so now we're solving for k so we got 0 is equal to 16k squared minus 72 I'm just rewriting this so we have space so then we got 72 is equal to 16k squared Therefore, k is equal to plus or minus the square root of 72 over 16. What did I do? I divided both sides by the 16. So I'd have 72 divided by 16. And we want to find the square root. We've got k squared. So we want to find out what k is. So we have to square root both sides. But remember, when we do that, there's a positive and a negative answer. So let's pop that into our calculator now and see if we can see what we can get. So we're going to go square root of 72 over 16 equals, and that's 2.12. So k is going to equal 2,12 or k must equal minus 2,12. There you go. So those are the values of k for which this thing will have real and equal roots. Okay, get it. Right, let's try another example. It says show that the roots of this thing for um are, uh, show that the roots equal 4d squared for all real values of h, k, and d. Okay, right. So let's just have a look at this. Um, let's see what we can do with these roots. We first have to do something. We need to multiply this out to get the roots, okay? So do you agree? That, and then we can see what we can get for delta. So we have to multiply this out because this is not in the standard format. Remember, you want ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. You can have this as the two brackets, but then this dude here has to be equal to zero for it to be in the standard form. So we need to get it in this form. So we've got x plus h, x plus k is equal to 4d squared. Right. So now we have to multiply this out. So we're going to use foil. So it's x squared plus kx plus hx plus hk equals 4d squared. So now I'm going to add up all the like terms. We've got x squared plus k plus h plus hk plus 4d squared equals zero. And that's an x. So do you agree now our a is one because the coefficient of x squared is one. Our b is k plus h, and our c is h k plus 4d squared. Okay, so now we need to work out delta. So delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. Okay, oh, I just realized I made a mistake on the previous one. This is supposed to be a 4. And 6 and 6 is 36, it's 36 times by 4, 6 4s are 24, carry 2 4 3s are 12, 14. Ah, that's much nicer. And then that becomes, okay, 
Um, guys, let me just fix this quickly for you. I was worried about the fact that this wasn't coming out as a nice number. So let's just fix this. I made a mistake. I said B squared minus 2AC instead of B squared minus 4AC. I apologize. So when you multiply this out correctly, it becomes 16K squared minus 144. Okay, and then if you do that, you can actually realize that this is a difference of two squares because you got zero is equal to 4k minus 12 or 4k plus 12. Therefore, you got 4k minus 12 equals zero or 4k plus 12 equals zero. Do you see that? Because this is this is 16k squared minus 144. So 16 is a perfect square, k squared is a perfect square, obviously, and 144 is a perfect square. So if we square it this, we're going to end up with the sum and difference of two squares. We end up with 4k minus 12 and 4k plus 12. But either of these has to equal zero. So we end up with either 4k minus 12 equals naught or 4k plus 12 equals naught. Therefore, k is either going to be minus 3 or k is going to be positive 3, and that's much nicer number. The principle was right. What I was doing is the principle was correct, but I didn't like the fact that my values were incorrect, were incorrect so I had to show that either. So I apologize. Um, yeah, and if I do make mistakes like that, please join the, <laughs> join the maths online group the, to enable maths class you actually have to join our maths class so you can message me and if i do make mistakes i apologize it does happen um normally if i was in class i'd have at least one student put up their hand and politely go um ma'am but <laughs> okay right but um so if you guys see a mistake feel free to point it out on the message board and i will correct it right let's carry on so we've got b squared minus 4ac so b is k plus h right so we've got k plus h all squared minus 4 times 1 times c which is this horrible thing here which is h k plus d squared okay so now if i write this out okay do you agree this becomes k plus h all squared minus 4 times h k plus d squared? So let us multiply this out and see what we get because we want to be able to say something about delta, but at the moment we can't really do anything about delta. So let's see what we can get. Do you agree this becomes k squared plus 2kh plus h squared minus 4hk plus, oh sorry, minus 4d squared. Okay, so then that becomes k squared minus 2hk plus h squared minus 4d squared. Okay, and this here is a perfect square, so it becomes k minus h all squared minus 4d squared. So do you agree? I can write, write this, and I'm running out of space. I'm going to write it up here. It becomes equals, whoopsie, k minus h minus 2d. And then it becomes k minus h plus 2d okay, is going to be your delta. So what can we say? We can say, well, we've got the perfect squares and we've got therefore k minus h minus 2d and we've got k minus h plus 2d. There's nothing more I can do that. So I don't know if I'm writing. Oh, I want to get rid of the brackets. Okay, so do you agree that this is a perfect square and this is a perfect square and that's a minus between them? So we can show that for all the real values of h, k, and d, we are going to end up with I don't to check something minus 4 times a, which is 1, times by c, which is 1 oh, grade 11s, I'm so sorry, I'm making so many mistakes, let me just try this again, okay, right, 
So this becomes, I apologize. Oh, I'm so sorry. Minus 4d squared. Okay. So we're going to have to multiply this out. And the mistake that I made was this minus in the first place. So let's just multiply this out. So it becomes x squared. Okay. Plus, then it becomes x squared plus xk plus xh plus hk min minus 4d squared okay minus 4d squared equals zero so now if i have to multiply this out i'm going to written right we need to group things so it becomes x squared plus these are both x's so we can say that it becomes k plus h x then plus hk minus 4d squared. So why have I grouped it like this? I've grouped it like this so that we have the normal trinomial. We've got a 1x squared, we've got something x, and then we have something without x's. So this here is a, this here is b, and the whole of this is c. Now if we apply this to delta, we've got delta is equal to b squared minus 4ac. b is k plus h, so it becomes k plus h all squared minus 4 times by a which is 1 times by c which is hk minus 4d squared. That's much better. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this out. So if we do this, we've got k squared plus 2kh, okay, plus h squared, right? Then we go multiply this with this, becomes minus 4hk, minus times the minus is plus 4d squared. Okay, that's so much better. So there we got k squared, this becomes minus 2kh plus h squared, okay, plus 4d squared. So what does that become? It becomes k minus h all squared plus 4d squared. And now I'm happy, grade 11s. And the reason I'm happy is because if you look at this, do you see that this dude here is a perfect square? And this dude here is a perfect square, right? So do you see that delta is going to be always be, is always, always going to be equal to zero or greater than zero. In fact, it can't even be equal to zero unless that's zero and that's zero, okay? So it could be equal to zero if k, h, and d is all, are all zero. And it says for all real values, okay? If k, h, or d are smaller than zero, do you agree? Because they're squared, they're always going to be greater than zero. If k, h, and d are all equal to zero, then it's going to be equal to zero. And if k, h, and d are greater than zero, then this whole thing is greater than zero. So we can say that delta is always greater than or equal to zero, which means what? It means that we're going to have two real rational roots. Two real rational roots. If it equals zero, they'll also be equal but chances are they won't. Okay, so that's what we can say. We can say that the roots are always going to be two real rational roots for no matter what the values of HK and D are. Okay, I apologize profusely for the mistakes. Um, let's do one more question. Okay, it shows, show that this has non-real roots for all real values of K. So remember what are non-real roots? It means that delta must be smaller than naught. Okay, or it has to be negative, which means more than So let's solve for this. We've got k squared x squared plus 2 minus kx plus x squared has to equal 0. So that's just taking everything to the other side. Now let's group. So we're going to group the x squareds. So we got k squared plus 1 x squared because there's a coefficient of one year. Then we're going to have minus kx 
plus 2 equals 0. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that this whole thing here is A, minus K is B, and plus 2 is C. So let's work out what delta is. Delta is B squared minus 4AC, right? So B is minus K, so that's going to be minus K all squared, minus 4 times by A, which is K squared plus 1, times by C, which is plus 2. So minus K squared is going to just be K squared minus 4 times 2 is 8, okay, k squared plus 1, and now we need to multiply that out again, so it becomes k squared minus 8k squared minus 8, therefore, our answer is delta is equal to k squared minus 8k squared is going to be minus 7k squared minus 8. And therefore, we can see, therefore, the delta is always going to be smaller than zero. It doesn't matter what value k is. If k is negative, it becomes a positive by squaring. If k is zero, we end up with minus eight. If k is bigger than one, then we end up with a negative as well. So for all values of k, for all values of k, Okay, values okay. Your delta is going to be smaller than naught, therefore they are going to be non-real roots. Okay, grade eleven. So we're going to call it a day now. Please join us on Monday, and we're going to go through, carry on going through maths, and obviously we will move on to solving by substitution. But please go practice your nature of roots, and then obviously you feel free to go and practice the questions on the Turnable platform on nature of roots, or if you've got questions that you're struggling on, you're welcome to mes message me. Have a great day.